Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, March 3rd. One quick announcement before we jump into the trades from the week. Um, we Don't forget, we will be streaming live Monday morning at 8.25 a.m. from both our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash navigation trading, as well as our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash navigation trading. So we'll be doing a trade of the week every Monday morning, 8.25 a.m. Central Time, right before the market opens. Uh, we'll, we'll make different announcements and, and keep you guys up to speed on what's going on with upcoming events and new courses and stuff like that. So make sure you join us if you can. If you can't be there right at 825 Central Time, it will be posted right after you see. So you can go back and watch the, uh, the recorded version. So look forward to that. Uh, let's jump in. So... Trading was a little bit lighter this week, so not as many trades, and, and that really just has to do with the level of implied volatility that we're at. I mean, we're, there's such low implied volatility in so many symbols, which creates less opportunity. But, uh, but stay tuned, stay engaged, keep placing trades, and I promise implied volatility will spike again. It always does. So, uh, and once that happens, we'll have we'll have a lot more trading opportunities. But Let's jump in on uh, on Monday, the 27th. Our first trade that we made was a, a vertical that we a, a put vertical that we bought in GLD. At the time, IV percentile was extremely low at four, and so we were looking for an expansion in IV and or a down move in price for GLD. So, if we take a look at what happened in GLD, this is the 27th right here. This the bigger red bar and that's when we got in and over the next few days as you can see GLD just just dropped pretty pretty quick uh, very nice they're very nice trade for us so we were able to get out of that trade at about a I don't remember exactly what it was 35 40 percent of max profit within just a few days so we uh, we booked that we booked that profit and moved on so that was a that was a good quick trade for us this week we go to the next trade uh, another opening trade is we bought a butterfly in IWM so we had implied volatility percentile spike to at to 57 at the time uh, and so let's take a look at that if we take a look at IWM uh, as you can see implied volatility had a little little period of spike up and we and we got in at that point since then it's it's just been crushed back down uh, but good thing we got in when we did. So if we take a look, here's the butterfly. So we've got a little bit of profit in that. Nothing nothing uh, to speak of at this point, not enough to take off. So we'll continue to, to monitor and send any alerts out on our IWM butterfly. And, and don't forget, we're still holding an iron condor in the March cycle. So actually went up pretty decent today. Uh, towards the end of the day, I didn't have a chance to uh, get out of that at a, at a nice profit and, and the market's closed so this pricing is a little bit off we're not quite that much in the profit but uh, so we'll wait and hopefully uh, get out of that trade on Monday assuming IWM doesn't explode higher which is very possible in this market but um, I think we should be okay and, and, and look to take that trade off pretty quickly on uh, first thing Monday potentially next trade we made was in uh, uh, in wheat, we had an iron condor in wheat that we that we took off for a nice profit, closed out at a uh, profit of 44% of max profit. Remember, in these in the grains, in corn and wheat and soybeans, you know the remember the uh, the implied volatility tool is not accurate because of the the nature of the way that the underlying futures roll and the and the exchanges provide the data. It just it doesn't it doesn't function on those on those grains. So this is really just a um, something that I kind of have to monitor manually. Uh, so a lot of times with the grains, when price moves up, that's when you'll see a spike in implied volatility. And so we we did we took advantage of that, and uh, and then booked that profit um, for for a nice nice gain. It took us about a month. We were in the trade for about a month, but we. Uh, 
got a nice profit, so that was good. Next trade was in XLV, so an opening trade. Again, another put vertical, another directional trade. Uh, just adding some short delta to our portfolio. You know, with, with a lot of things kind of at those price extremes to the upside, you know, it can't go up forever. So, so a lot of things we're just kind of looking for little pullbacks in, trying to stay engaged. Um, and, and so XLV is up almost, 12 per, uh, almost 10 percent in the last month. So if we take a look at a chart, as you can see, I mean, this thing's just been on a parabolic uh, to the upside. Nothing says it can't keep going. However, uh, I look at this as a, as a good opportunity, a potential price extreme to see if we can't just get a little bit of a pullback, similar to what we saw in GLD uh, in, in earlier this week. So we'll continue to watch that. It's, it's pretty much where we got it. We're down slightly on the trade now, just looking for a, a pullback. And remember, you know, this April cycle, it's got, let's see, the April cycle now has still 49 days. So all we're hoping is that sometime in the next 49 days that price trades a little bit below where it is right now. Okay. So I, I like the probabilities of that, even though it's really a 50, 50 bet when you put the trade on, um, you know, I, I like to, I like to take counter, uh, counter direction trades after you've seen major moves. You know I mean? Look, you see a major move here and then boom, pulled back. Saw this major move down and then boom, pull back. So you never know when that's gonna happen or, or where in the in the extension, but but all you can do is place trades. And the fact that we want more short delta in our portfolio just bodes well and XLV was the uh, ETF of choice this time. Next trade was in um, was GLD, and so that was that was actually today, and that was closing closing that vertical, which I already which I already mentioned. So Let's go back to the platform and check out some other positions that we're in. We've still got a, a couple positions on in natural gas. So this is one that we've been kind of battling for, for a while. We've got this inverted strangle where we've had to adjust it a couple times and really just waiting for time to decay and for price to move back up into our range. You know, it shows at this point we're down 1500 bucks, but that doesn't count all the rolls and adjust adjustments that we've made where we've taken profits off the board. So we're still down on this trade, uh, not to that extent, probably just a couple hundred bucks at this point. Oh, I hadn't calculated it exactly. And then we've also got uh, an iron condor uh, here, which we, which we are in the profit on. Um, not enough to take off yet, but we'll continue to monitor that. And then we've also got the put side of an iron condor on that remember when we when it moved all the way down we took off the call side because it was pretty much at max profit and now we're still holding the losing side or the put side and it has since come back uh, i'd like for it to go a little bit higher and then we can get out of this trade for a th this particular iron condor for a, a a break even or a small profit so continue to monitor that in the uh, trading cycle for april we still got 25 days so Nothing, uh, nothing urgent to do at this point in, in natural gas except for weight. And if we look at the implied volatility, remember you gotta use UNG, which is the corresponding ETF, and that gives you the accurate reading for the implied volatility. It's pretty low, so it has contracted nicely. We just had this major move down after we put on a couple of these positions, and it's working its way back up. So we'll continue to monitor that and, uh, and send out any alerts needed uh, on, on natural gas. Uh, corn, we've got a position on in corn, and that is, actually we've got a couple. So we've got this iron condor, where it's still pretty centered, nothing to do there. And then we've also got the put side of a previous iron condor, where it moved down, we took off the call side, banked that for full profit, and then price has moved back nicely for us. So we could take it off right here and on the whole iron condor bank a, a, a nice little profit. Uh, just wanted to hold this over the weekend. If we can potentially get a little bit move higher or just kind of stay right here, uh, get a little bit more juice out of this trade and then we'll, uh, and then we'll bank that profit. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Apple. So I've got a, a trade on here an Apple that we put on, which is simply just a directional short, vertical trade 
short put trade uh, along with the rest of the market. You know, obviously Apple, Apple's been extremely explosive. Put this trade on when it was about here, thinking we were at a potential price extreme, looking for just a little bit of a pullback and Apple just continued to rip higher. So that's gonna be, that, that's currently a losing trade. And with this trade, we've got, we've got 14 days left on that particular trade. Uh, most likely it's gonna end up being a loser. But remember, you, you, when you put these trades on, especially defined risk trades, because of the transaction costs and different things, I mean, this was purely just a directional trade. We either were going to profit or we were gonna take the loss. Uh, and so I'm okay taking this loss. Obviously it's not what I wanted, but, uh, but it served its purpose as far as providing short delta in the portfolio. It just didn't work out for us. So uh, more than likely we'll take a loss on this one, but we'll just hold it and stranger things have happened. Apple could have a major move down and get us right back into the profit in the next, in the next couple of weeks. But we'll see and we'll you know, potentially look to add uh, another position in the next cycle if it, if it makes sense at that point. Hopefully we'll get some more volatility and won't need to be so directional. Remember, directional plays are, are not as high probability. A lot of times when you're buying debit spreads, I mean, you're putting those on as, as really 50-50 trades, just trying to add directional bias in your portfolio uh, and, and stay engaged in the market. So that's one that's probably not gonna work out, but maybe it will. Now we've got the double calendar still in DIA, which is the Dow. Uh, ETF. Uh, this market's closed now, so this, this isn't quite accurate. It expanded a little bit into the close, uh, but potentially uh, be able to look at taking this off for a nice profit in DIA on Monday or early next week. Then EWW, we've got this adjusted strangle that we're still managing uh, down just slightly on the trade. So looking for potential, potentially a little bit of a move down in price. For time to go by and then we can bank that profit hopefully fxe we've got a profit in our iron condor here not enough to take off yet though so we'll continue to monitor and manage that uh, iwm i already mentioned that one q's qqq nasdaq we've got a, a profitable calendar in the q's as well not quite enough to take off yet though looking for a little bit of a down move and an expansion in implied volatility, and we'll bank that profit hopefully ne uh, early next week. TLT, we've got a double calendar. Uh, implied volatility has contracted. We need a little bit more of an expansion and a potential move to the upside to, to get out of that one. So we're, we're underwater a little bit in that one, but we'll uh, continue to monitor and manage that double calendar and TLT. Uh, XLV, I mentioned that one, and then XRT. We've got a strangle in XRT, uh, still fairly centered, no profit loss there, just we'll continue to manage that. XRT has been kind of a our, our loan underlying that's had higher implied volatility, uh, and that's due to a couple things, uh, announcement on retail sales, as well as a lot of retail companies uh, uh, with upcoming earnings announcements. So, uh, We'd like, what I'd like to see happen if, if we don't get out of this trade with a profit is I, I'll probably, and, and if implied volatility stays high, I'll probably end up scaling in and adding another strangle um, in, on this next week to just widen our break evens, give us more exposure with that high implied volatility underlying and, and continue to manage and monitor the current one. So Hope that was helpful. Again, Monday morning, 825. We'll see you there on Facebook or YouTube uh, for the live streaming and the trade of the week. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.